What's going on, Dennis fam? Of course, we're whispering because we're bringing our little dude home. But our family is waiting at the house, and we're going to surprise them. They don't know that he's coming home today. Right now, we're in the NICU. We've been in here for about four days. Obviously, we've been going back home and then coming back here because we don't live far from the hospital. Yes, and we have to come back and, like, feed him and give him his milk and stuff because I'm able to produce enough breast milk for him that he's going to be breastfed. Just some good bonding time with our little dude. Some good bonding time. He's a very time. sleepy little guy. Yes, he just got done eating, and then now we're about to get him all dressed up and take some pictures of him. We got his outfit on. Look how cute it is. It matches the nursery theme. It's a little big. You know, we were expecting him to be a big baby because like all the reports, he was supposed to be big, but you know, when your water breaks and you have... So is this the outfit he's wearing to the house? Yeah, to go surprise the family. He's all ready to go. Of course, we got, you know, strap him in, but look at his little bun. Got him his little blanket. Oh, he's grinning. He's grinning. All right. I think he's excited to leave. I know. Now it's time to bust out of here and go surprise everyone. All right, man. You ready to go home and see all the grandmas? I've been wanting to use this for a long time. Let's see it. Oh! I see him. You see him? You feel like a professional dad with that? Yep. All right. Let's take him home. <laughs> Get our little pumpkin. Oh, bless you. Tomorrow's Halloween, so he has like seven outfits to wear. So this one we put him to bed in because it's so soft. Welcome back, guys. Today we are telling you our crazy birth story on how this one got here. So we will start with the day it happened. Like, yeah. let's start with like the hospital visit first. The hospital visit, okay. So you all know if you've been watching that every Tuesday I would go in for my OBGYN appointment and my prenatal appointment because I'm a type one diabetic um, and I have been for 10 years. It wasn't just gestational. And I would go in and they would check everything, make sure my sugars were good and give an update. And this was my 36th Week 36, yep, 36. Week appointment. And that morning we went and did our ultrasound, checked on the little one. He was doing good, breathing good. Checked my blood sugars. They were the best they've ever been with an average of 114 over a seven day like period. And it was 36 weeks and four days to yeah, be exact. To, to be exact. And then around, was it, I had a later appointment that day. Was it two o'clock I went? Something around two that time. Two o'clock I went to my OBGYN and I knew it was day to get my cervix checked and see if we were dilated any if the dates were working I was eating six dates a day and drinking raspberry leaf tea because we had a induction scheduled for what was it Monday October it Monday. 31st yeah October 31st it was Halloween Halloween and we go in and I was like do you think I'm gonna be well, dilated I don't think it was an induction you were just gonna have the baby because you already dilated at the appointment well they have, I have a tone in oh <laughs> Okay, well now you know. Um, so we went in and I asked her if you think I'm going to be dilated. And she was like, no, most people aren't with their first. And you're only 36 weeks and we're going to have to induce you anyway. So actually, at this point, we were supposed to go in Sunday. Because we were supposed to start the Pitocin and get my body ready for it. Yeah. And, um, oh, we have someone. We good? <laughs> we good. Um, so we go in and she, like, does the check. And she's like, we're going to have to do that again. And we're all like, what? And she does it again. And she's like, you're at a two, almost a three. And I was like. And she said she could fill the sack. Yeah, like she could fill my water sack. And I was like, okay. I was like, but I haven't lost my mucus plug. She was like, you don't have a mucus plug. And I was like, okay, like this is about to be interesting. So at that point she canceled me coming in Sunday and starting getting it all ready. And um, went ahead and told us Monday to come in at like 6 a.m. that morning she yeah. wants to come in to start the induction. Well, we went home we were like, okay, let's get all of our Christmas stuff up. Cause that's really all we did at that appointment was just get checked. And we were like, okay, let's go home, get all of our Christmas stuff up. I try to get um, everything prepared for when he was prepared. here. Let's get all of our videos ready we want to get done. Like, cause she said he could come at any point. The way that it felt, but she was like wanting it to be during the day not in the middle of the night or the weekend we were up to like 11 30 honestly because we laid down we had just laid down for bed after putting everything up everything all our christmas up. decor <laughs> and it was i laid down in bed and i remember like feeling my insides pop and lexi said she felt like she would 
give birth all day and we thought i feel like we thought it would be wednesday yeah the next day i mean we technically it, it technically it was wednesday but we were expecting like me to go to the hospital wednesday and like my water breaking and like slowly going into labor and everything progressing but no as soon as i laid down and felt that i got up because it didn't like w break in the bed mm -hmm. it didn't drizzle out of me so as soon as i stood up it like gushed out of me and i was like christian my water just broke and he just laid down and he was like no it didn't i was like i'm literally dripping water and like i knew for sure it was <laughs> so my after water after seeing the visual evidence i proceeded to get all of our stuff <laughs> he together. was honestly running around in his underwear trying to get everything together but also earlier that day i had put all of our hospital bags already in the car so yes. that made it a lot easier to get everything all you had to do was grab the camera bag um get some final stuff my wallet our social security cards our ids i think from the time it took for your water to break to us getting in the car it was only like 10 minutes yeah, it wasn't long at all because my water broke at 11.45 and we got to the hospital around 12.06. But yeah. I personally wasn't worried because as soon as your water breaks, usually it takes like 24 hours for really labor to hit. But I think I had, well, I had mild back contractions all day, but they weren't like bad. Yeah, just took that hot bath. I took a hot bath, ate my daily dates for the night. She, um, she ate her dates in the bathtub. I don't know if dates would work for anyone else, but they work for me. So if you're just to try something get a huge bag of dates and then eat at least six a day because I think I was pushing like six to ten because they didn't bother me and, and I like, you really wanted it and you I really wanted the baby here nothing I wanted here I wanted to be an easy labor mm -hmm. and I mean it helped but um we get to the hospital around 1206 um I call my mom tell her my water broke because she had a feeling too that he would come soon so she was rushing to the hospital she was about an hour away and she honestly got there in probably like 40 minutes because she said she was yeah she was zooming there um so we get to the hospital they take about 20 minutes to get us checked in and by the time they like I was standing there at the ER front door to get to the room I progressed at the front desk at the front desk progressively started to feel the contractions like I really wasn't feeling them as soon as my water broke but I feel like as soon as I got in that room and like I sat on the toilet my water finished breaking yeah after you got in the room it was it game was, over it was game over it was just me trying to help you I, I remember the worst one hit and you were trying to help me figure out how to put on that gown, that gown and I was like so I was like I don't care just let me get out of here and the pain was so bad and he was like can I help I'm like no I don't know what to do I don't know how to move my body it all just hurts and I was just thinking I can do this I got this breathe I was praying to the Lord please take the pain away I was like it was bad and then I get to the bed and the doctors and the nurses finally come in it took them forever to come in my nurses and doctors were amazing but I don't think they truly believe my water broke Oops. yet Sorry, camera. <laughs> Let me move you back. They they truly didn't believe that my water broke until they checked my cervix because right. when she checked my cervix, it was probably like 1230 by that point. I was dilated to a six. And then I was like, okay, the contractions are coming in heavy. And it was like bad. Like I couldn't move. I just wanted to scream. But I just sat there and I deep breathed the entire time. That's all I remember doing was like breathing. And then um, they hooked us up to the monitors. And about 20 minutes later, I was at an eight. And it was like going fast. And was did you go get the bags when I was at a six or an eight? Probably a six. I it think. was when your mom just got there. I think Christian, it was this, definitely a six. Christian eight. ran down and got... Our bags at the car because we didn't get them because we didn't think it was gonna go that fast um so that happened and then i'm laying there and i really kind of zoned out at that point point. and at some point i don't know the exact time mm -hmm. but they said it would be like 30 minutes before you got an epidural oh that's when when i got there they had a the lady come in and get my well they didn't do it as fast because they seriously did not think i was going as quick as i was mm -hmm. and they thought that my pain was just like the start of labor pain when it really was like the most increased part. So they take my blood work and they're like, okay, in about 30 minutes, we'll be able to come back and do your epidural. Um, they're like, thank goodness the epidural. Yeah, you, yeah, you're the reason we went so fast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all on you. <laughs> um, 
so the doctor was in the, in the room next and she was like as soon as we get your blood work back that you're good to go we can give you the epidural and i was like okay awesome great thank you and then in that like it was probably like 28 minutes exactly like i was so close to getting the epidural when i literally felt like i had to push because the contractions were the worst like excruciating pain like it felt like i had to hurl or like poop honestly and it was like i didn't know which way it was gonna go and there's a giant giant thing inside there <laughs> and um the doctors checked and they're like oh goodness you're at eight progressing fast all of them come in the stir the sterols stirrups whatever they're called they put my legs in the oh, stirrups yeah, yeah they go up and there's like seven people come in the room like i've never seen like so many people, people in there. come in and they were all great even though they were like the ones on call that mm -hmm. they, none of them were my doctors i've never seen any of these people before any of the nurses um and they were all just great honestly the doctor was amazing with me and and it was just like boom and then it hit like probably what'd you say like one o'clock was when the heavy labor hit i have no idea times i just uh, know it was in, it was all within two hours from us finding out your labor broke to him being here yeah. it was roughly two hours two hours of being in immediate labor after the water broke and I pushed for 14 minutes and that was the best part honestly pushing guys was the best part the contractions were so bad without any medicine um, let me clarify I did want medicines because some people were confused thinking I chose to do an unmedicated but I did want the Just epidural we did title it unmedicated because it was I mean it was unmedicated but I wanted an epidural but things progressed so fast that I didn't get to have it which honestly I feel like is better for my body afterwards because a lot of people say they have really bad back pain from the epidural and stuff. And I mean, the only thing that bothered me after it was my hemorrhoids. Mm -hmm. So I pushed for 14 minutes and then they had to use the vacuum on him because he would not like push through. And then he came out, he broke his poor little clavicle and he came out. They laid him on me for literally like one second, heard one cry. And then they put him over in his little thing. And his color evidently was not the best. So they put him on like... He said he was looking very pale. He was looking first. very pale. But they were the... He like progressed so fast. My body started to stress. And that's why they had to use the vacuum to get him out. So I didn't have to push any longer. Because of oxygen. They were scared his oxygen was going down. And I mean it does make sense why he came out a little pale. Mm -hmm. Then they went ahead and put the oxygen on him. They did all of his like measurements and stuff, and then I remember the nurse saying, "Okay, we're gonna take him to the NICU." Well, they're taking him to the place to see if he needs to go to the NICU. Yeah, they to took test him, him. They took him somewhere to like run all of his levels and stuff. And of course, with me being a diabetic, they had to make sure like sugar levels. There was extra like precaution they had to take. Um, speaking of sugar levels, my sugar was actually pretty low that entire day. Like, it was super low. I barely took any It was insulin. definitely not normal. I feel like that was one of the that, main points we noticed. That was a big hint, too, is that day my sugar was very low. And it hadn't been like I really had to watch what I eat, take extra insulin, and I took none that day and did everything the same. Um, and I grabbed two candy bars on the way out the door thinking <laughs> my sugar would be low during labor. But when we got there, it, like, took a 360 and shot up. Like, it progressively through labor went up from like 200 to 250 to 300. And it reached 350 by the time labor was over with. Um, so that was the biggest hit from diabetes was just my sugar went up. I really didn't have anything else go wrong with my sugars. They were worried about me going into DKA, which is like a diabetic coma. But I wasn't because I had never been in that. And my sugars have been that high before. Not in the pregnancy, though. That was my highest my sugars have ever been in the pregnancy. So they took him to the NICU and got him all figured out. And then they took about 30 to 45 minutes to stitch me up, you say? Yeah, it was a long time to stitch you up for sure. It was a second degree tear. Um, it so was more in the inside area. I, mean, the, I don't know if you all want to know all that. I don't know <laughs> what type of, like insides they did stitch up but it wasn't like from like the vagina i guess to the almost butthole. left a gauze pad in there yeah but they saw it, at the <laughs> it was kind of scary because i'm like still in the stirrups as they're stitching me up and i'm watching all the doctors talk and whisper over me and they're like can you feel any of this and i'm like no and then they're like counting their gauze and they're like oh there's one still in there and i'm like i've heard horror stories of people getting gauze left in them and like not ending well 
Um, so they did that and it was just kind of in shock still that I just like given birth. Um, we made a few TikToks after I give birth because we couldn't make them before. Yeah, we had a lot of content planned out because we figured we'd be in there for more than like two hours. Yeah, because if inductions usually take forever. So we were ready to just bust out content waiting for him to get here. Didn't happen, but then I went up to the postpartum floor and I still really had no clue what happened with him at this point. Um, I didn't even know his clavicle broke. Um, and then it was like 4 a.m. that morning, we went in to the NICU and saw him. No, it was 6. It was 6? Because oh, I, I went to bed at 4. It was, I think we got the room at 4. Maybe, yeah, maybe we got the room at 4. We got into the, I guess, postpartum room. The postpartum room, room, yes. And the nurses there were absolutely amazing and took amazing care of me. Um, I started pumping that night. As soon as we got in there, I started working on that, and that helped me a lot. I feel like if you're going to breastfeed and your baby is taken from you right away, start pumping because that helps so much with it because then you can go give it to him through the bottles that they give you there. So we went to the room, and then at 6 o'clock, they called us and told us that we could come see him. For the first time. For the first time. I mean, obviously, we seen him come out, but, like, we didn't get to... No, just... we didn't get... No one got to hold him. Our family didn't even get to see him till almost a week later because mm -hmm. um, no one was allowed in the NICU but us. So we go in, and we see him. We're emotional train wrecks, and he's hooked up to all these machines. He's laying on the warmer, and at first, we're like, oh, my God. Like, is our kid alive? <laughs> and he's got his clavicle strap on, and he has breathing on. On IV and they're like oh don't worry we're just running all these tests we're trying to make sure he's good he's doing amazing I was like oh okay but he was a happy little dude in there he, he was, was he was so content and happy and then we went back and they told us his sugars levels were good um, but he wasn't taking a bottle well so he was either gonna have to go back on a feeding tube or they they clipped his tongue he was like tongue-tied or yeah, whatever they had to clip his tongue at so some point. they clipped it to help with him like latching and stuff to the bottles because of course he couldn't even go on my nipple for about three days so that's why he doesn't really do well with breastfeeding he just I always pump and give through a bottle because he doesn't like to latch so they did that and he'll do this thing like if he can't get them he's like, he'll be like <laughs> it's so funny because when he's really mad and we don't have time for a bottle I just like stick my boob in his mouth and he's like he doesn't want it because it doesn't come out fast enough um nipple shields have help with that but on day two when I was supposed to go home he was doing amazing. Everything was looking great. Of course, you know, his clavicle was broken and he had to wear the strap for, he wore it for about, what, two weeks. We did get the clear today that he was good to take it off. It's still we'll fractured. We'll probably still wear it at nighttime. Definitely. Like when he goes to bed, we'll keep it Definitely, because it's still fractured, but it's better, not broken. So we go in and we're like ready to take him home with us because we know it's the day I go home because I had no comp. Oh, I did. Preeclampsia. You you went home day three, not day two. Well, technically day two. It was day three. It was day three. Because oh, we hmm. got there Tuesday and then. But we didn't get checked into the postpartum until Wednesday. Wednesday, morning. Thursday, and then we left Friday. Okay. But I forgot to mention that I did get diagnosed with preeclampsia right after I gave birth. Like I don't know if it was a for sure or what. My blood pressure was. Really I think you elevated. probably had it because your feet were also swollen. Oh yeah, my feet. Extremely swollen. It was bad. Everything was swollen. I would say for like the last week it was just swollen it time. was very i really don't think it was down no. that much and my blood pressure was high that morning when we went into the doctor's office so they did diagnose me at that so they put me on medicine as soon as i was in the postpartum unit and we found out one of her issues she was crossing her legs yes when she slept. i always cross my legs when i sleep or when i lay i have their cross right, right now or when i sleep um they were just crossed and that causes the blood pressure to rise and even when they check it they're like oh yeah they checked crossed. it one time and it was like 20 over and then she was like uncross your legs and then it was like normal i was like okay i didn't think it would work that fast i but. didn't either but on the day i went home we went in to check on him and when we last we saw he was off everything well day two you're going too far ahead girl day two day two okay Jonas. that's what i was about to say well you're on oh okay not day three we went, in, we went in to Wednesday check on him. Wednesday was his first day we got to see him. Thursday, jaundice yeah. and all that he stuff. He got jaundice. But a lot of vacuum babies get jaundice, they said. And it's nothing that's like a big scare. It's just his color and he has to lay under the light. A little blue light. I can pop up a picture yeah. up here where you can so see. So they laid him under the light for 
24 hours at least and then that next morning um, we were in there with him and the doctor came in and told us that she wanted to run a couple more tests so ultimately he wasn't in there because he was sick or unhealthy. It was a, there was a test to there's like this culture test or whatever yeah, of a bacteria. some kind of bacteria to see if it would grow or not and it didn't end up growing and that's how we got out that's how because it, 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 it took here, but. it took 48 hours to get the test back so after they did all of his blood sugar checks to make sure of course that he wasn't diabetic immediately and that his sugars were great um it was just waiting on that test so that means that he got to stay under the blue light a little longer but it did help tremendously with his jaundice um I mean, as much as I'd love to him be with me right away, mm -hmm. it was the best for him to be in there because let's say he didn't have all those problems, he would have been jaundiced either way mm -hmm. and then he would have to go, like they would have taken him out. It baby. would be worse to take him home for like a day and then send him back to the yeah, hospital. Yeah, definitely. And we left Friday from the hospital and then we got to get him home Sunday night. We came home Sunday, but while he was in the hospital, I was still pumping and delivering my milk. We would go feed him my milk. We would feed every three hours during the day, and then usually at night, we would just sleep I would just pump excessively throughout the day and give it to the nurses to feed him at night. Unless he ran out of milk, then I would run and give him milk. It was definitely a very tired sim. Like, we get, we are tired now from being up late, but it was like the drive to the hospital to make it on time and then be back, then pump. It was like worse It was than good though, like for our sleep schedules to already be out of whack. So we were yeah. kind of used to it. It was, it helped us be on a schedule with him and he's done honestly great We've with the schedule. We've kind of figured out a schedule now. We so. have a schedule down pat. Of course, you know how newborns are. It could change at any moment he'd not do it, but we don't even have to like wake him up for his feedings now. He usually will wake us up right away for his feedings. But we try to wake up a little before because he doesn't like it when his milk is cold and stuff. No, he has to have his warm bottle and he just will sit well, there. I, and I said that really dumb. He doesn't like his milk cold. It takes a while to get the milk warm <laughs> so he cries for a little We've bit. We've never honestly tried him with cold milk. I don't yeah, know. I don't think some you should. <laughs> some people say they do, but really? I don't know. So yeah, we, uh, we got home. Everything went good. He got to meet immediate family. Immediate family was here. We were going to surprise them with him because they, our family was amazing and came and saw us every day, checked up on us, even though he Even though they couldn't see him. Yeah. They just sit in the hospital with us they and would, talk to us. They would sit in the hospital with us. They'd bring us food. They'd make sure we're okay. Um, my mom was the only one that saw him because like she was there when he came out. Mm -hmm. And then um, Christian's family couldn't see him, of course, until he got here. So we tried to surprise him, but it, it was getting too suspicious because it took forever to get our discharge papers Sunday mm -hmm. night because he came home Sunday night. Because um, we told him there was a possibility. But we didn't think so until we went in and they were like, um, I'm the doctor doing a circumcision. And they don't do your circumcision unless, until you leave. Un unless you're leaving that day. And we were just like pure excitement. Because they have these little cameras you can watch in the NICU of your baby. And we saw he was... I don't know if they have these at every NICU know or not. But we at saw, hours we had a We camera. saw he was back under the blue light. And we were just so discouraged. We were like, oh man, like he... He really is back jaundice again. I mean, how much longer until... And we went in and it was like, oh, you're going home today. And it was like the craziest feeling ever to know that we get to bring our baby home. But now we're home and he is two weeks and two days old. Yep. And he's doing amazing. He's over here snoring. He eats so much. I don't know who he looks like more, me or Christian. I see a mix of both, I feel like. I have no idea. I can never tell what babies look like, like if they look like their parents or not. I'm I not good with that. So yeah, we had one of the craziest birth stories, honestly. I am not gonna complain how labor and delivery went because I only was in mm -hmm. labor for two hours, pushed for 14 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it was excruciatingly painful, but isn't all labor painful? I feel like if I had contractions for longer, then it would have been awful. But the point that he wanted to come out so fast, especially with it being our first, I know some people go like 40 to yeah, like 42 weeks time. with their first one. Also, I want to say that we were in the NICU for four days, right? Or he was in the NICU for four or five days? Four or five days. I think it was five. And it felt like eternity. So oh, it honestly, was, it was, all prayers out to yes. everyone that has a NICU baby because I know there's people out there that go way longer than the five days right. that we went. Literally. And the hospital offered for us like 
to stay there in the room a little longer with him, we couldn't do it. We would have went crazy because it just felt like we were waiting for him to come out. And every time we go down there, it would just be something new and something they wanted to watch. Nothing severe or scary. Mm -hmm. It was just like, of course, starting with the clavicle and then the breathing and then his tongue tie. Also, and then... we lived close. So like it wasn't, yeah. I get like if you live like an hour away from the hospital, you wouldn't want to yeah. go home. I didn't want to take away from some mom or someone that just had a baby and they lived like two or three hours away and needed a room when we did not live far at all from our hospital to make sure that we were just that we have the best like situation and work too that we were given the opportunity to be there for him mm -hmm. as much as he needed us to be there for him so we were just very blessed on that because some people i don't see how people have real jobs in the NICU baby because that's like or even hospital. after <laughs> or after i mean Babies are a lot of work, but we are truly blessed with ours. We are. So shout out to all the single moms, everyone that's got a job. Like, you don't even have to be a single mom. You could be a couple just like us. And, and both have to work nine to five jobs. And it's super tough. It is. Or you don't get maternity leave. I know some yeah. places don't pay you for maternity leaves. Or like the dad, when the dad has to go back and the mom is home for mm -hmm. a little while. It's just a lot to deal with, and our heart goes out to all of we you guys. We will be praying for all of you all, and anyways, guys, we will see you all in the next one. Peace.